we've been terribly aware of ageing since the beginning of civilization, and we have been completely unable to do anything about it, so we have simply developed these ways to put it out of our minds and get on with our miserably short lives and make the best of it, rather than being preoccupied by this terrible thing that's going to happen to us. And that was actually pretty rational, pretty sensible, until, basically until I came along. Dr. Aubrey de Grey, gerontologist who studied computer science, and now he is working on ending ageing, curing ageing, reversing ageing. I'm not really keen on ageing, I'm not in favour of it, but unlike most of you, I'm really doing something about it. I decided when I was really young, like eight or nine years old, that I wanted to make a difference in the world. There's going to be this enormous turbulence in society arising from the knowledge that this is coming. I, for one, am very excited about living to be 500. We've been led to believe that ageing is inevitable and therefore we're, we're going to die. And we potentially are going to spend the last years of our life in suffering, perhaps with dementia or some other disease. You know, it's extremely frustrating. Ageing is a medical problem, just like Alzheimer's or cancer or whatever. All of these things, they're just the aspects of ageing that we've chosen to give disease-like names to. So you've been doing a lot on mice. Tell us about what specifically you are doing in the hopes to defeat ageing. The approach that we are pursuing that I pioneered 20 odd years ago to uh, keeping people healthy as they get older is a divide and conquer approach. It's an approach that involves going in and repairing and eliminating various different types of molecular and cellular damage that the body accumulates throughout life. The time has to come when you actually combine different treatments that repair different types of damage in the same mice at the same time. Even though people have been testing individual things in mice for quite a long time now, uh, it's only now that enough of them are working well enough that it actually makes sense to ask, you know, how well do they work in combination. How quickly do you think we can take this to clinical trials? Things are already moving into clinical trials. There are quite a few things that are already at that stage. But what we want to do is to do the same thing in human beings that we're currently doing in mice. So I think it's absolutely critical for your audience to understand that the idea of bringing ageing under comprehensive medical control is very much science foreseeable now, not science fiction. What will we do with all the people once where we're all living for longer? All the things that people say like, oh dear, well we put all the people or isn't it selfish or doesn't death give meaning to life? You know, all of these things are indeed completely idiotic. It's such an important topic, it almost drives me insane the fact that people aren't chucking more funding towards these. Surely this would be number one, right? There's much, much more funding in longevity research now than there was even five years ago. And that is fantastic news. But it's very, very important to emphasize that that funding is extremely unevenly distributed. Overwhelming majority of it is going to a few fashionable, let's call them low-hanging areas. This work will save lives faster if two things happen. One, 